Let my honesty spill out through the pages. You're listening to Escaping the Rat Race. I'm your host, Amy Leo, a singer, songwriter, and mental health educator. And our show is all about questioning the status quo and pushing the boundaries into what's possible for human beings and not probable. So tune in and get ready to escape the rat race, not only the monotonous nine to five work grind, but also that incessant internal mental chatter that prevents most of us humans from experiencing more joy, peace, clarity, and freedom. On today's show, I'm speaking with solopreneur, musician, fellow singer, songwriter, and tech whiz Kelly Munstrad as he shares from his heart his personal journey from living mostly from fear and limitation to now living life, building business, creating music, building community with much more love, freedom, and success. If you're interested in the power of letting go and what letting go really entails, stay tuned for today's show. Spoiler alert, the answer and the conversation may surprise you. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending wherever you are in the world. My name is Amy Leo from ReviveYourSanity.com. I'm here with my colleague, Meg, and we are doing a very special, as I would call it, a very special interview today with a dear friend of mine named Kelly. He is in the business of music and technology. We've also worked together on conversations about something called the three principles understanding. And if you don't know what that is, we'll share a little bit more about that. But for right now, I'm just going to let Kelly take it away. Kelly, great to have you on the show. And would you share a little bit about your story, what you're up to uh, with the folks that have never met you before? Well, thanks a lot, Amy, for doing this with me. I'm very excited about telling a little bit about what it is that I do and those folks exactly who walk in the store experience what it's like at <laughs> store. I said it again. I like to call it a studio. And I'm still having trouble defining that. When I first decided to do this, which was actually many years ago, I was too afraid to do it, of course. And I stayed as a person underneath the, like the right-hand man of the owners and the two business I worked in for over 15 and eh, about 20 years in business now with the schooling. I finally found out that uh, being under the wing just wasn't for me and I needed to go back to that dream of running my, my own business. And at the same time, music needed to come back into my life, I guess. So last year I started to do some schooling with Kerry Cole Voice Music out uh, on the East Coast, and life has been different ever since. Music was really the core passion that I've had in my life, and I put it aside for numerous reasons and for lots of uh, stories. It's hard for me to not talk about three principles, actually. I was considering how in the world I was going to explain how my business has thrived without it. (laughs) I actually wouldn't know where to begin there. So I kind of want to let you guide me maybe towards that a little bit and see if I did in fact answer your question as to why it is that I've started this solopreneurship, if you will. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Well, I think there's something so common and so human in your story, Kelly. I mean, as a fellow creative, as a fellow singer songwriter, and it doesn't matter what it is, whether your passion is music or like for Meg, I know her passion is travel and doing adventure sports, or I've got friends of mine who are writers. It's such a common thing that those things to which we have such a unique relationship with, those activities that we light up when doing, you know, how easy it is for those to kind of stop having a presence in our life. And we're the ones that are, of course, (laughs) either creating the space for those things or not. The three principles, uh, how I would kind of describe it, is it's really a principle-based understanding of human experience. And it seems to me that the more that I learn about how my human system works, the easier it is for me to troubleshoot it when there's problems, the easier it is for me to know what right fuel to put in. Uh, depending on, you know, what's ever needed for that day, for that mood. Um, has that been your experience with your discovery of, of again, your, 
your core humanity, Kelly, and how that relates to, of course, business and, and music from the inside out? Yes, uh, 100%. So um, everything you said makes complete sense and uh, it's easy for me to expand on at this point because the journey's been just so awesome over this last year. As you were talking there, you can tell I've been listening to some podcasts. I, uh, you said about creating a space. There was a, a time last year where I had met someone uh, and had some of the experiences that were, well, directly in my experience from my upbringing since grandma brought me to church the first time and at like maybe age four or five, the, the spiritual realm has always been something uh, very visible to me because I saw it as I was raised on the farm, the way I was raised and how close we were to nature and things like that. Well, last year I had a, an experience with someone, um, uh, an individual where that space that was created or by kind of myself from inside out when I decided to change my life and open my mind to the risk involved in following my true purpose. It allowed all kinds of things to start entering my own space, my own spiritual, my own wisdom, my own energy, mind, whatever you want to call it, the formless. And in experiencing um, this incredible shared space with this other person, also like-minded individual, I, I realized that <clears throat> that I wasn't alone, more or less, in that uh, there is others that are like me that even though in the community I'm in, that might, and there's probably lots of communities around the world where musicians and artists are looked at in a different sort of way. I knew I wasn't alone anymore. And I knew that that space that I was in was exciting. And <clears throat> I was already excited going into it. I dropped everything about myself because I had to change myself in order to move forward. I had to not be this business-minded person that I was under the wing of the owners anymore, task-driven and everything had to be laid out in its perfect order, looking for happiness somewhere out there when it was all along, it was just right inside me. And uh, experiencing that space with someone else Uh, just gave me the open-mindedness and the freedom to explore even more, and it hasn't really stopped. Um, so I brought that to my business, and the space that I'm sitting in my chair right now, every piece of me, object that is left in my life, is still in this studio. So the whole space is me and I keep trying to fill it up more and more. And it seems like the more that I do, the more the people that walk in feel that same very experience that I did. I, well, there's so many things that you're, you're pointing at and yet it's, yeah. it's but yet it's the same. <laughs> right. So right. It's, it's, it's all kind of this theme of this universal wisdom or uh, creative force or connection, you know, another word people use is love, you know, but all of those words are, are in my view, pointing to the same thing. Again, this inside out experience of the world. And I am curious as to, you know, when I speak with some folks, they have an idea that change is really difficult, that it takes a lot of work that they have to implement certain techniques or study with certain teachers. And I just am curious as to what was your experience with change specifically? What, what does it look like for you? When you say uh, change, one of the things that I was drawn to instantly was when I realized that I could have known this so many years prior, 
how simple it was. And what you said at first there, to do things, to find this experience, then there's really, the less you do, the better it becomes. <laughs> and it's, um, it, it was hard, the change, that change right there was the hardest part, was to know that I could have been making it that easy by just letting go of all these concepts that I had about the way things should be in order to be happy. That's beautiful, Kelly. Um, and I want to just kind of, if I can make sure I'm hearing what you're saying correctly, um, that what you know now that you didn't know before was really the fact that each one of us is only living in the experience of our concepts at any given time, that we're only ever living in the experience of our own thinking and our own perception all the time, no exceptions. Uh, am I correct in, in getting that that's what you're pointing us to? Or would you like to further elaborate on that? We're always, yes. But we can, we can drop that, those concepts if, the, if, if we're in that, that thinking. Let's think of a, a story, even just yesterday, I uh, was at a job site, and of course these job sites are amazing to begin with. The, some of the things that are coming out of it, I, I had no idea how I was going to make it through every month I've made it through, and I just do, well, here it comes, this awesome job. Anyways, I'm, I'm on the job site and uh, getting towards the end, but still have a ways to go, and the internet connection started getting poor, and that's when... Uh, you know, I was like, oh, oh, this customer, oh, this, uh, boy, he's going to, this is really important that I keep this guy happy, you know, the connection that it was and things like that. And I got a little worked up and stuff, but um, I noticed that right away. Uh, and I just, I looked outside. I looked at his house, his gorgeous house. He must have caught this huge, like, I don't know what you even call them, swordfish or whatever. They got the big long nose and it's all, you know, he's a hunter and all this stuff. And a fancy, beautiful, gorgeous house. And I can tell by the decor and everything is just like, so guess what? No more, no more internet problem. <laughs> and, and then, of course, for, by, by me, uh, knowing my music side, there was an old piano. <laughs> I'm like, there it was right next to his whole office. I'm like, you know, let's see what this piano sounds like. It's way out of tune. <laughs> kind of kind of like I was there a little bit. Mm. But I just fell out of it. I just let go of it. And I ended up in that moment because of my business, like I say, Kelly Munstrud Music and Technology, well, I was all in the wrapped up in the technology part, but music brought me out of it. I ended up uh, getting so inspired by this out of tune old piano. I took a picture of it and sent it to my daughter. And I said, because she's played out an out of a tune piano for years too. Um, and it was our own. And she's coming around to music. And I, I sent her a picture and played a tune and recorded it. And you know how we can send that in our texts nowadays. <laughs> And hey, we should uh, we should make it our, our little quest in our music journey to find pianos randomly wherever we go around the world and kind of drop the tears of the universe on the keys every now and then and put them in a collection and just keep them. She's like, that sounds like a good idea, Dad. And I'm like, all that. When I left yesterday, I can't describe. The next moments were just amazing. It was like I wasn't even... <laughs> and here I go. I'm off on a story. <laughs> and, uh, but this is what it's like. Um, how do I describe it better? And, and here again, this is where 
it's hard for me to have a conversation about how well my business is going without talking about three principles. So, and, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to be talking to the person that introduced them to me. So uh, this is really a blessing to be able to share this and yeah. Yeah. Well, Kelly, uh, I mean, Kelly and I started um, kind of talking in this kind of educational way again of how human experience unfolds without giving any prescriptions. So the three principles is not a cult. Okay. We're not, <laughs> you yeah. didn't drink any Kool-Aid. Did you, Kelly? No. <laughs> you know, no, there's, there's, no, there's, no. No per, there's no prescriptions of what, what an individual should do, how they should do it. And ironically, Kelly, what I get when you're sharing your story so authentically is that you're having this moment to moment experience of being in the present of living in the now, but you're not, you're not attempting to go there. It's happening in an effortless kind of way. You know, you, you didn't have to sit down and go meditate. You didn't have to uh, go reframe your thinking when you notice that you started to get off balance uh, and get whatever that internal storm was of stress, you know, when the internet connection wasn't working. You know, and this is the potential of this kind of conversation is that it's fundamental to every other technique that's out there because it's simply pointing at how the human experience unfolds and it unfolds the same way for everybody. Now, granted, our circumstances are completely different. You brought up your upbringing. That absolutely is different for everybody. Circumstances are absolutely real and exist. But if we can bring it back to what's universal about human beings, what's on offer for everybody is what Kelly is so beautifully illustrating. And that's a freedom of mind, no matter what circumstance you're in. And it's not just woo-woo, airy-fairy stuff. This is really practical stuff. You know, it's helpful. It's helpful to take action from a state of mind that you know is clear or to have clarity instead of, you know, how I can describe how my life used to be before having this conversation. And I studied a lot of psychology, <laughs> a lot of personal development things, and not to say there's anything wrong with that, but I still had a misunderstanding fundamentally of where my experience came from. So it was like I was a ball in a ping pong machine going back and forth, back and forth. And, oh, if I fell in love with this guy, oh, life was the best in the world. Oh, my dog died. Now it was like, oh my gosh, you know, all these emotions are, you know, or my, my bills were late. You know, all of a sudden, all of these circumstances then looked like things were happening to me, uh, that I was a victim. Uh, and, and the more that I've kind of played in this idea that that's not true, the easier it is for me, like what Kelly's describing, the easier it is for me to deal with the logistical, absolutely real things in my life in an efficient way that they get solved quicker and with less mental strain for me. Um, I, I just think it's beautiful what, what you're pointing the listeners to, Kelly. Um, well, I appreciate that. I, I did uh, catch from what you said there and how I brought up my upbringing, my situation, and uh, music and technology, and maybe. Uh, associating the music and my daughter there like that. I'd also like to point out again that coming from a business background that I did, building an internet retail business is what I did and all these things, it doesn't matter what occupation you have. It doesn't matter where you are in life. The, the person that that matters is just you the the source of your happiness is inside you it's not out there it's not it's not when you get the next promotion it's not it's not all these things we set in front of us to attain and try to achieve it, i remember meg is on the phone too she's talking about fitness um the relationship i have with my body is much different now uh that body is what gets me around to be able to share these experiences with other people. It's important that I keep this thing uh, working and it makes me feel better. And uh, my light shines bigger when I feel good. And it's e we might say that, well, <laughs> that's easy to say, but I can tell you I was way overweight. I mean, there was, it, yeah, my recovery from that is unbelievable, but it wasn't because 
here again, it wasn't so much a, I made a schedule and a routine. In fact, I still haven't even stepped on a scale. I don't even want to measure it because I'm talking to my body from inside. I'm saying, come on, I, I, my soul or my, that, that inner part of me that knows the message that needs to get out that says, I want to be heard just like any of us want to be heard. No matter what we do, we've got to talk to that uh, body and have an agreement to say, okay, you and I, we've got to get along because I'm not able to do what I need to do. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I don't know. It's, I look at it, everything like that a lot more lightheartedly. But just that everyone has a, uh, the ability to find this because we were given this. These two... Meg and Amy are going to do this retreat that I've been so excited about all year and I might not be able to go, which is one thing or another. But if when I consider we, it's being called a retreat, right? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a retreat. I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, like in war when they say retreat, fall back. You know, and they're they're running away from something, running away from the enemy. When you think of a vacation, you well, I need to get away. I need to get away. I get I can't all these problems and everything else. <laughs> if you go, if you fall back into yourself when you go to this retreat, you won't. You'll you'll be coming home already before you left home and you will realize by the time that you go back home that you you really didn't you know you get back home from vacation and you unpack your suitcases and you realize you got to go back to that job and you think you've got all this new attitude and about six hours into your day you're right back to where you were before <laughs> and you're like, why this vacation was supposed to make me feel better i'm supposed to be happy now <laughs> I, I just, I, I haven't figured out how to perfectly describe it, but that happiness is there by just letting go of the plots that, and enjoying the moment. Like when, when I let go of the fact that the internet was slowing me down and that this client was going to be upset, it wasn't, I didn't really do anything. I looked around and maybe I can relate this again to my upbringing with nature. I just looked around my surroundings and that anything, even an object can pull my train of thought. That's how many thoughts are going through. Our, and if we attach, we, we have this tendency to attach to the worst ones. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, and we hold them and we build them up like this big mountain of the only way. It's like this mountain of happy that... Even if you wanted to, the fences get higher and the walls get bigger because you're just not looking at the person standing on this side of the wall. And if you turn around and just look, there might be a completely different <laughs> version of life. Like when you were sitting on that park bench, Amy, you should tell that story again. I've been talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> yeah. Well, there, I mean, there's so many great nuggets of what you're you're sharing, Kelly, and I'm sure that listeners, you know, some listeners at first glance may think, well, no, my happiness and security does come from my husband or my job or my career or my lack of a career, whatever that could be, you know, but, but secretly, everybody is kind of on to this, you know, so if you're getting that kind of knee-jerk reaction of feeling pessimistic or how this is practical in your life, I invite you to just sit with that and just start to be aware that this may be a lens through which you live life. 
but it's just one lens of life. It isn't the absolute reality. It's just an opinion. It's just a perspective because as human beings, we are physical bodies, like Kelly said, and we will always therefore be interpreting things. We don't have direct access. Our brains are sitting in this <laughs> dark skull. <laughs> you know, They don't have direct access to, to the world outside. They only rely on signals from the body and impulses in our brain to make meaning of that. Um, so, you know, there's something beautiful about this piece that Kelly's sharing that everyone kind of knows, or they've seen people go through this. I mean, as singers, I mean, think of our idols, Kelly, you know, we were told growing up that if you're a famous singer, that mm. then you'll have it all when you've got the, the wealth, the fame, the girls, the whatever, but yet so many extremely talented, successful singers kill themselves or they're addicted to drugs or they've gone through eight, you know, divorces or what, whatever, you know. So clearly, if we really get honest with ourselves as a race, <laughs> we can see that things aren't lining up to how we think it is or how the media or, again, our, our dominant cultures would lead us to believe. So I really encourage everybody on the call to really question what they think that they know and to start realizing that we are all human, you know, <laughs> everybody has insecure moments. I mean, even the rock stars do. <laughs> oh. So, so, so there's, <laughs> there's this piece of, of, it was a big moment for me, Kelly, when I realized that similar to what I think you've been sharing and realizing yourself that, hey, wait a minute, there's nowhere to go but here because I'm always bringing my human self with me. Even if I'm making a million dollars a year, I'm going to have moments where I'm anxious. I'm a human being. That's going to happen. So then it became that it made less and less sense to keep acting as if I was less than because I wasn't a famous singer or because I wasn't a millionaire or because I didn't have the perfect relationship and the white picket fence and the two and a half kids. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. And that works with any, you know, occupation too. It's, uh, it is easy for me to relate to the music part and the, the rock and roll, the whole thing, looking at it. It's, it's about following that purpose more than anything. It, you, you discover yourself uh, and, and, and you become that as much as you possibly can. And there's no reason when we start talking about what it, the confusion that there is in the world um, and the Amy's invite to you to, how did you put it, question what it is you know. I mean, that really is a, the starting point. And just to let go of what we know. And I think that as much controversy as there is, I mean, I see it all around right here in town you can almost the people walking into my studio you can see it on their faces their their um the way they're looking at things and the way the world is you can see the frustration and the more that each of us are able to let go of what we're seeing from the media what we're seeing from what we need to do, what seems impossible, there's still a way to come together. Um, and it starts within ourselves I, and letting go of what it is we know, what it is we think we know. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I would like to know if, Meg, you have any questions or comments before we close up today. It's been awesome listening to you guys describe kind of like the three principles to everybody so that they understand what is a little bit better um, coming from somebody who is a coach in it and somebody who is practicing it themselves after being coached in it. I think it's awesome to get both views. Kelly, just for your viewers, you know, if you want to share this to anybody, is there anything about your business that you would like to share for people that might be interested in working with you? and how it is that you would go about working with them or anything like that? The biggest thing that I'd love to do is connect with artists that want to collaborate or co-write and do some demo production work as I do with Amy. I'm sure she would be willing to share her 
experiences, whether they've been bad or good or otherwise. <laughs> but that, as far as me being able to offer something, I can do that globally as I am already. So that would be great. Easy as it is to get a hold of people nowadays. My email is just my name, which is kelly.monthrude, K-E-L-L-Y dot M-O-N as in Nancy, S-R-U-D at gmail.com. So, yes. Wow, what a treat. Fantastic. Fantastic. And we're almost out of time, unfortunately. Um, But Kelly, if you could share what is (laughs) is <laughs> this might be a loaded question but what's the biggest difference that understanding where your human experience has come from has made on your life um, it would be the fact that i can i'm going to maybe say it in a way that's kind of hard to grasp but i can live in form and accept the formless and almost feel as if not having control is the best, most awesome, wonderful happiness of experiencing every moment that I, it's, it's indescribable. And it brings out nothing but new insights. Beautiful, simple. Really simple. Uh, for the listeners that are curious in learning more about what we are talking about with the three principles, uh, feel free to reach out to me at amy, A-M-Y, at A-M-Y-L-E-O dot com. Or you can learn more about the retreats that we are offering at reviveyoursanity.com. Again, that is reviveyoursanity.com. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the call, Kelly, and to have seen your growth throughout the past mm-hmm. uh, year has been absolutely inspiring. Thank you. Yes, it, it has been. It is. It is a gorgeous thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, incredible. Amazing. Well, great. And uh, I hope to have you on, on the show again. Um, and we, yes, I guess that's all we've got. I'm just like wanting to sit in this good vibe, but I have to end the call now. So okay. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon, Kelly. Thank you so yeah. much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Well, I had an amazing time doing that interview with Kelly. Kelly is actually the producer for our radio show, our podcast here. Um, and it was just so beautiful that he was speaking Hmm. without an agenda and without anything on it, you could really tell he was speaking from his heart, from what was true for him and that he wasn't following um, any preconceived notes. And I, I really appreciated that. And with that, my biggest take home was how Kelly spoke about letting go and how, at least as I heard it, he wasn't speaking about letting go as an action or a practice or Uh, a really loaded concept, but that letting go for him has become really natural and really ordinary. The more that he finds out for himself how the human mind works and how his human experience unfolds. And I really liked the point of community that he highlighted about not feeling alone. Uh, I think that can be really important for people, especially when they're starting to explore life's deeper philosophical and psycho-spiritual questions. And the one thing that stuck out so clearly to me was how Kelly's awareness and understanding of how thought and consciousness actually work, how that impacts every aspect of our lives, every moment of our lives, and that simply recognizing that allows Kelly to fall into a space where he can actually be more effective in his business and his music because he's coming from a wiser place, he's coming from a quieter mind, and he's not as limited with all of the ideas that he previously had about the world, or about music, or about building business, or about family. 
So I really appreciated today's interview. If you want to get more inspiring and practical conversations like this delivered right to your device, you can subscribe on iTunes. All you've got to do is type in the search engine, Escaping the Rat Race with Amy Leo, and that will come up. We also have the podcast series available on a variety of other platforms such as YouTube, and also we'll be moving on to SoundCloud soon. So until next time, keep rocking.